Hello, and welcome to this lesson in quantitative reasoning. Today, we will look at the fourth of four videos on the fundamentals of sets, the, be the beginning instruction on using sets. And in this video, we're going to talk about whether sets are equivalent and whether sets are equal. And these are related ideas, but the details are important. Now, to determine if two sets are equivalent, it is actually really straightforward. Equivalent talks about the size of the set. So, you know, this I in here, you can think about that as, well, this talks about the size of the set. How big? And we talk about how big a set is. We mean how many elements are there. And in the last video, we saw that the cardinality of a set was how many elements there are. So we're going to talk about two sets being equivalent if their cardinality is the same. They have the same number of elements. It doesn't matter at all what those elements are. If a set has three elements and another set has three elements, then they are equivalent. You could have a set with numbers in it, five, seven, eight, and another set that has animal names, dog, cat, goat. There are three elements in each of those sets, so they are equivalent. It has nothing to do with what's in the set. It just has to do with how many things are in the set. So that is a definition you need to know. So to be equivalent, it means they're in one-to-one -one correspondence. This is an idea in mathematics um, that is very important, actually. But it means you could draw a line from one element of one set to an element of the second set, and each element would be paired up with one and exactly one element in the other set. So it doesn't matter what is in the sets. They just have to have the same size to be equivalent. So here I have um, determine if the set of days of the week, D, which they have not written out, but hopefully you know, and the set A are equivalent. Now, I would assume that you know what the days of the week are. That would be a fair test question. But here we go. Let's write out the set of days of the week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Now, there are seven days there. We probably knew that before we even wrote them, but if we count them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there are seven elements in set D. Let's count the elements in set A. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Both sets A and D have seven elements, therefore they are equivalent. Notice I'm not saying equal. Equal is a little stronger relationship. So you just literally count the number of elements in the set to determine if they're equivalent. So these two sets are equivalent, and the one-to-one -one correspondence goes to the idea that I could draw lines from each. I could, and they don't have to go to the, to, in the pairs I'm showing, but it's just easier to draw that. So you can see if I start with each element of set A and draw a line to an element of set D that doesn't already have a line drawn to it, I end up with pairs, an, an exact number of pairs. There's no, nothing left over in A, there's nothing left over in D. These sets are the same size, which means they're in one-to-one -one correspondence, which for our lesson today means they are equivalent. So the two ideas that students get confused are whether sets are equivalent or equal. Now, all sets that are equal are equivalent, but in order to be equal, what the elements are does matter. They ha would have to be, ex they would have to match one-to-one -one for the same elements, and we'll talk about that in a moment. So, again, are the following two sets equivalent? I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in A, and one, two, three, four, five in B, or I could do this. I could look for one-to-one -one correspondence. And, oh, I missed the eight, but I have a couple left over, and I could have done the 12 and had the eight left over. So if there's anything left over in either set, you don't have one-to-one -one correspondence. Or, more, more simply, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven elements in A, one, two, three, four, five elements in B. They do not have the same cardinal number, so the sets are not equivalent. So, this is important. Equal does not mean the same as equivalent. Now, it turns out after we define this, you'll see that if two sets are equal, they must also be equivalent. It's not possible to have two sets that are equal if the two sets are not equivalent. But equal is a stronger relationship. It means they are exactly the same elements regardless of order. So if 
they're equal and they have, if they have the same elements, they must have the same number of elements. And that's why equal implies equivalence. Sets can be equivalent without being equal, but they cannot be equal without being equivalent. So this is a trick question. Are they equal, equivalent, both, or neither? You will never answer just equal because if they are equal, then they are both equal and equivalent. Now, if they're just equivalent, you if they have the same number of elements, but there's different elements, you would just say they're equivalent. Or if they don't have if they don't have the same number of elements, they're neither. Um, if they have the same number of elements, they're either equivalent or both equivalent and equal. Because once you realize they're equal, you they had to have the same number of elements. So how do I tell if they're equal? Well, I, I look. Do I have a one here. Do I have a one here? Yep. I have a four here, a four here, I have a nine. Well, first I could count them too. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So they're equivalent, so it's possible they would be equal. If I get different numbers of elements, I immediately know the answer is neither. But if I have the same number of elements, now I have to decide whether they're merely equivalent or if the elements are all the same, they match, then, then I answer both. So, so far the one, the four, and the nine exist in both sets. 7 is in A, 7 is in B, 6 is in A, 6 is in B. So these are equal and equivalent. They have the same number of elements, and I can find all of the elements of A also exist in B, and because there's the same number of elements, there are no leftovers. Um, that's what you're looking for to see if they are equal and equivalent. So equal would not be incorrect statement about these, but given the phrasing of the problem, you were at, you were given four choices, it was like a multiple choice, equal, equivalent, both, or neither. Equal is not necessarily a wrong answer, but it's not the best answer. And in a multiple choice, you're looking for the best answer. The best answer is both. So, are the following two sets equal, equivalent, both, or neither? The first thing I do is count. One, two, three, four elements in A, one, two, three, four elements in B. They might be equal because they are equivalent. But then I look at them. I have letters in A and I, I don't have a, I have a C in set A and don't have a C in set B. That's as far as I need to go. I just need one element that's different. So they're, they're not equal, but they are equivalent. Now, if I had had 0, 1, 4, 5, 6 in B, there would be neither because B would have had one more element than A. So the first thing you do is find the cardinal number and then see if the elements match. They might be just written in a different order. All right, so that's part four of four on the set fundamentals video. Um, I will see you in the next section, and I'll hopefully see you in class. Email me any questions you have.